Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be doing a review of the 03 to 07 Dodge 5.9 Cummins platform. In 2003, Dodge came out with the uh, third generation model of trucks. 2003 to 2007, they began using the 5.9 Cummins common rail motor in these trucks. Um, seen a lot of good and a lot of bad out of this platform. This platform in this year range, it, it tends to be in the price range for people that are first time truck buyers or maybe they're looking for a backup truck to pull a camper with or something of that nature. So I really want to start with engine uh, on this video. Our normal protocol is interior, exterior, drivetrain and engine, but I'm gonna start with engine because I wanna make sure that everybody that's watching this video, especially if you're shopping for one of these trucks, uh, watches this first. As most of you all know, the 5.9 is, is a really, really good motor tried and true. Uh, the common rail version of this motor, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's one that you can have internal failures of this motor um, that you have to be aware of as a purchaser of these vehicles. Now again, like I said, um, we see a lot of these trucks come in that are bought by young guys, young gals that are wanting diesel trucks. They find something inside their price range. Uh, so they get one of these trucks and bring it over for us to take a look at, just you know, make sure everything's okay. And sure enough, it's got a down motor. And let me talk to you about that just a little bit. The common rail inside of here, if you have a common rail failure on the injectors, it can absolutely wipe out a cylinder. Another thing that went on with this motor was the new turbo orientation is towards the back of the motor, four and five cylinder. So you're usually gonna have a problem at those cylinders there because you have a combination of the heat. And if you've had a, if you've had a injector problem, it gets even worse on that side of the motor. So let me show you a very easy, bare bones way to check to see if this is a truck that you want to purchase. So let's take the hypothetical situation. This is an 05 truck, you're looking at it. It's in your price range. Take the truck out, drive the truck. Drive the truck and get it to operating temperature. If you're buying a truck from anyone and they won't let you do that, then walk away from the truck. Take the truck out, get it up to operating temperature, take the oil field cap off of it. You're looking for blow by here. Tons and tons and tons of blow by here, a lot of, lot of smoke. You've got a down cylinder in this truck, no questions asked. Put the cap on it. If the cap blows up, if it's able to, if the crankcase pressure is actually able to lift up the cap, the motor is down. You have to understand that. I'll tell you a story about this on 5.9 trucks. When we purchased Diana to build our pulling truck, um, that truck itself, same thing. Guy brought it in. We purchased the truck. It had exactly everything we wanted for the platform for our pulling truck. Guess what it had? It had a down motor in it. It had a down cylinder in it too. Actually had two down cylinders in it. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't a, ma it was a sort of a mass thing. You wouldn't have known it unless you drove it, got some miles on it, got it up to temperature, uh, and, and saw the amount of blow by that the truck had. So, um, injector failures on this motor are another thing. You know, you're looking anywhere from injectors for, you know, remands are $250 all the way up to brand new injectors are a little over $400. Um, so if you find one that's got a down injector or it's got some problems in it, maybe it's got a tick in the motor or something, those are all things to be relative of. Another failure that, or uh, be aware of, another failure that happens on these trucks is they drop valve seats. You drop valve seat, choose a head up. Um, so if you've got one that just, any sounds that doesn't sound natural to you, blow by, you've got to walk away from the truck or you've got to get it to a price point to where you can repair the engine um, and, and go on uh, about your way. If you go, you do the things that we talk to you about on a daily basis, fuel quality, uh, making sure you're watching your EGTs and just be a conscious driver, then you're not gonna have any problems out of these trucks. But if the trucks have been abused, it will show inside of the motor. So wanted to talk about that, especially to you young folks that are out here looking for trucks, be aware of this. Don't jump out here and buy the first truck you see 
make sure you know what you're getting into because if you get into a truck note and you can't afford to put a motor in this truck, it can be a really, really bad deal for you. All right, let's get away from motor. I can't do it. Adam wants me to turn around and tell you to leave a comment. Leave a comment below. Tell us about your truck. Tell us about any experiences you've had. Anything that you can do to help your fellow truck owners, please do that in the comments. Here, here, wherever the hell they are. Drivetrain. Uh, 03 to 07 platform. Actually had, let's see, four different versions of transmissions in it. We'll talk about transmissions first. Uh, let's talk about automatics. Uh, the automatic in these trucks, 48RE. 48 REs, if we talk about a lot, got a bad name. Um, yes, there can be problems with this truck if it hasn't, uh, if the previous owners haven't, you know, adjusted the bands on it, if they haven't changed the fluids, changed the filters, banged on them, uh, you know, didn't have proper fluid level, coolers, plugs, so on and so forth, different things. Um, they can be uh, troublesome for you. Lots of products out there for 48 RE transmissions to be able to safeguard you from some of those things. Uh, but you know, if you drive the truck and the motor sound, if you drive the truck and you notice some slippage or um, some shuttle shifting or any of those things, just be aware of that and try to work that into your purchase price or if you decide that you're going to purchase the truck. Uh, there were actually three different manual transmissions that were in these, the platform of truck, 03 to 07s. Uh, the 0304, some of them had a five-speed NV4500 transmission in it. Um, that was actually a D-rated motor, it was a 250 horsepower motor. Um, that's a, you know, that's a good truck. If you put a tuner on that truck, that automatically takes it up to, uh, you know, above what the, uh, above the horsepower anyway. So really, that kind of negates the whole uh, D-rated motor because they've got normal 305 injector or 503 injectors in them. Uh, so there was NV4500 five-speed on on some of them, NV5600, which we've talked about a few things a few times. Not a lot of problems with the NV5600. Sometimes some sink girl problems. Uh, clutches in them are single disc, uh, single mass flywheel. Uh, those can don't hold a ton of power. If you're above 400 horsepower, you're probably going to slip the clutch on that. And then we've got the G56. The G56 was in the 04 and a half to 07 model years, and they're in there in the 67 trucks too. Um, the G56 uh, Mercedes transmission, all in all a good everyday transmission, uh, doesn't hold tons and tons of power. Uh, there are a lot of guys out there that are on 1,000 horsepower on those trucks on, on a stock transmission. Uh, the weak link on the G56 trucks is the clutch system. It's on dual mass flywheel, a lot of problems out of that. So uh, you're going to be looking at a clutch change on that one, again above 400 horsepower. Uh, but all in all, you know, good transmissions. With the introduction of this truck, the 03 model year, uh, Dodge went over to American Axle. So you've got American Axle up front and up back. Really don't have any problems with the axles themselves, the differentials themselves. Um, just don't see a ton of problems with those. But you've got the same problems that you did in the Dana axles, Axle trucks. Uh, U-joints failures are just about the same in these vehicles. The front ends on this truck, really not any different. Uh, you know, we talk about how to see if I've got front end problems. You just take the truck, turn the truck on, or turn the key on on the truck to where you can take the steering wheel and move it back and forth between the bumps. And when you do that, you want to look underneath of the truck and look for weak links. You want to look for tie rod movement, track bar movement. Um, you know, if you want to jack it up and check the ball joints on the truck, we showed you how to do that. The problems that we talk about in all Dodges are still here on this model truck, so just be aware of that. Um, yeah, I think that just about covers drive line. Um, let's talk about exterior. Exterior, they didn't really get a whole lot changed on the Dodge paint jobs or the body panels, well, the paint jobs. You still got some clear coat problems. This is Adam's truck. You can see he's got some clear coat problems there on the high side of that. Sorry about rubbing through your dust, Adam. Um, this truck was actually repainted at one time. Uh, common rust spots, rocker panels are bad about rusting. Uh, top of the bed sides here are usually bad about rusting. You can see that this has actually been bondoed. Didn't do a very good job of blending that in. Adam and I were talking about that this morning. But um, that blend right there, is probably a byproduct of the rust coming back through, honestly. That spot right there, I would think. So that's probably rust. Um, 
you know, rusty body panels on these trucks and other things to be aware of, especially you northern guys. Uh, I don't feel like the undercarriage of this truck really rusts any worse than any of them. Again, depends on your location um, with the rust. Interior, not as eventful as the second gen trucks. Um, same, same stuff you see on interior here. Uh, seat corners are usually beat up just a little bit. Um, you know, as far as AC system goes, you don't have the problems with the blend doors like you did in the second gen trucks. The dashes are, um, you know, pretty good. Sometimes have a few gauge problems we see inside of them, stepper motors in the gauges and whatnot going out or, uh, but it's all, you know, pretty normal stuff. But tell you one thing that we see a lot of failures in the interior on these trucks is if your truck's got power windows and the power window's not working, even if it's in the front or in the, especially the back windows, what we find there, and so if you've got a back window, let's just say four-door truck, your back window doesn't work. Before you go to changing out switch panels, which now, let me talk about these switch panels just a minute. This, the the uh, power window panels, don't think that these don't go bad, but before you throw X amount of dollars at a, at a power window switch, make sure that you check the wiring going back to this door. Okay, both these doors, this wiring harness here, I don't know why I have taken these apart before and seen just absolute messes of wires being cut. There's nothing in here that actually pinches them. Uh, I don't know if there's a tension problem with there, but you can pop that grommet out, move it back and just check the wiring harness. So again, before you throw a switch at it, uh, make sure that you check your wiring harness, make sure the circuits are complete in the in the, the power window system and that's pretty much it uh, i feel like i've touched on all the bases i really just you know if you just pay attention to what i've told you about motors I, i've seen gosh i can't tell you how many young people we've seen buy trucks and start having a problem uh, start noticing loss of power uh, oil consumption ticking and then bring them into the shop and they got a down motor and you know then immediately it's just a just a bad situation for them both financially and personally so uh, they are good trucks you just have to be aware of the failures that you can see inside this platform so I'm way from thoroughbred diesel uh, don't think I'm knocking on this platform I'm not this is a good truck you just got to know if you have a question about this video or any of our other videos please just give us a call like and subscribe to our channel and as always thank you for watching our videos we appreciate it